Hey y'all, it's Bailey and welcome back to the channel for another product regrets video slash products I wouldn't recommend to you. Typically it takes me a long time to compile these videos because I really have to not like a product to include it, but I recently did one about a month ago and I got a lot of good feedback from you guys. You said it's very helpful. Uh, whether or not I think it's just a total dud product or it just didn't work for me, you found it useful in, you know, if you were on the edge, you just weren't quite sure, you might buy it, you might not. It kind of helped you make the decision uh, one way or the other. So because of that, I thought I would be a little bit more diligent about the product, the new products that I'm trying this month, whether I talked about them in a video or not. A little bit more conscious of that and kind of keep them in a pile that was, you know, doesn't work for me slash I don't think it'd work for anyone. And as a result, here we have a whole bag full of those things. So let's go ahead and dive in. Quite a few foundations in here. Let's go ahead and start with one that I already talked about. Should be short and sweet and no surprise to anyone who watched the review video. It's the new Hourglass. I think this is the seamless, it's tiny font down here, but I think it's the seamless finish something foundation. It's the new stick foundation from Hourglass. I had the two shades, Ivory and Warm Ivory, which worked really well for me. Uh, if you watch the review, you'll know I love the finish. It gives you a really beautiful, natural finish second skin kind of lit from within glow, but it just did not last on my skin. I have combo skin and it wore off in, you know, crucial areas like my chin, uh, around my nose, and then it clung to dry patches and it just kind of was a hot mess throughout the day. Would not consider it long wearing despite the flawless, amazing finish. I just found I needed a lot of extra help from setting sprays and primers to even get wear the compared to, you know, foundations that still weren't even in my top five. So given the price tag, wouldn't recommend these to someone with combo oily skin, but I do recommend that you go check out the full review if you have dry to normal skin, just to understand better what the lasting power is like and what my uh, problems were with this so you can get a good idea of the wear in case you feel like it's something you still wanna try. Like I said, this is one of those products that is not a hard, you know, no one should buy this because it's absolute crap sort of thing. It just did not work for me and my skin type. The same could be said for the next two foundations I'm gonna talk about, which uh, first of which is L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow. I know a lot of you guys wanted to see my thoughts on this and I was going to do uh, getting ready with me what's new at the drugstore style kind of video, but the more I use this, the more I just thought this is not something I would wear on an everyday basis and so I it just kind of fell into the back of my collection and as I was taking, you know, inventory for a video like this, I saw this and thought, Yep, needs to be in here. So the deal with this is that I just didn't find, and where is it? Oh, here is the Pro Matte, the original. I love this guy, but I didn't feel like it had the same coverage, despite the fact that on the back, it both both these same medium. The Pro Matte for me is just way more buildable to get a much more flawless, but full coverage. Whereas the Pro Glow, I would build and build, and it would keep, it just wouldn't set. I found that the more I built it, I didn't get more coverage. It just wouldn't dry down like I would need a foundation to. So as a result, it stayed glowy and dewy, developed excess dew and shine throughout the day. And then I found if I layered it up for coverage, it would transfer everywhere. So just was not, not for me, would still recommend the Pro Matte, although it kind of defeats the purpose of a glow, but just add highlighter. Uh, the other foundation that didn't work for me is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer, and I have the shade Natural here. By the way, the Pro Glow, I have shade 202. This is a little too light. I would go up probably half a shade or a full shade here, but 02 Natural in the Milani was great for me, and I like the coverage. I would not say it was a 2-in-1 foundation and concealer for me, like I layered it up uh, where I would typically need concealer, around my chin where I have blemishes, and my under eye area where I have discoloration, and I still found I needed concealer, so right off the bat, it didn't, it wasn't really a 2-in-1 product for me, and then as far as foundation goes, my oily skin, or my combo skin, the oily part of my combo skin was just no match for this guy. It developed excess shine throughout the day, kind of broke down into this hot mess, and so, uh, yeah, just just not for me. And I know both of these were products that received mixed reviews. Some people love, love, love them, and others, it just didn't work out for them. So I fall on the side of those it didn't work out for. But like I said, this is not kind of a crap pile of products in this video. It's a mix. It's a mix of products that I feel wouldn't work for anyone, as well as a mix of products that just didn't work for me. So uh, I definitely see how these could work for some people, namely those with normal to dry skin. 
but I just don't know that I could recommend them to someone with combo or oily skin. Next up are brushes. This is an oval brush set from my makeup brush set, not the Luxury RTs or uh, there are a couple other kind of high-end brushes out there. I got these for a couple of reasons, one of which just is, was to see if this is just a, a brush format that I would be interested in buying Luxury in, in the future. Um, so I do have to say I, I like the motion of applying products. These just happen to absorb a lot of product. I found that it left things streaky. It soaked up a lot of products. So I was having to use more. So overall, I like the format of application, but these brushes in particular are nothing that are above and beyond brushes that I already have in my collection. And in fact, they make me use more product. The one exception to that is, and another reason why I bought this, is this guy. It's like this tiny oval brush. And I got this because I had seen a lot of people using this with lip composites. If you're unfamiliar with what those are, they're like these, uh, it's a combo between like lip gloss, lipstick, um, not a lip stain, but it's, it, it, and they come in jars. The kind that I got are from Who Is She Cosmetics. And so I have a couple of those that I'm working on, um, trying, testing out, all that kind of stuff. But I'd seen people use this with them as opposed to traditional lip brushes. And I have to say, I do prefer this method of application, which I can talk more about in that video, but of the, what, t eight or 10 brushes that came in this entire set, this is the one that I actually like. So um, maybe I should have just gone ahead and purchased this one in the luxury edition, but a jury's still out on whether or not this style of brush is worth it for me, but these brushes in particular, the My Makeup brush set, not, I would say. They didn't break the bank. I think they were 20 25 bucks so it was good to start to see if it was a format i liked but if you yourself can avoid spending that money uh, to know that these are duds i hope that helped up next are some eye primers i was scouting around on ulta one day and saw that essence had a new eye heart color intensifying eye primer uh, just for the sake of looking for affordable eye primers to add to top five under five dollar videos another type of video that you guys like to see. I thought I would give this a try, hoping that it would be a success, and it just isn't. It really just doesn't do what an eyeshadow primer should in that it helps your eyeshadows last all day. I didn't notice it particularly intensifying my eyeshadow shades, but on top of that, it just didn't help my eyeshadows last, which I feel like for me is number one job of an eye primer. So unfortunately, it didn't. It wasn't a mistake that broke the bank, but if you're looking to save some bucks on an eye primer, this is not the one I would recommend. Next one is the Hypergel Lift. It's kind of an eye area primer from Pure Minerals. This again, I was looking around on the What's New on Ulta, saw this guy and I love eye products especially in the spring and summer that cool because I have allergies and just generally it's hot so anything that will kind of cool and depuff the eye area is my best friend during those months so I tried this guy out put it in my under eye area as well as all over you know the moving part of my lid up to underneath my brow bone really used it as an all over you know in general eye area treatment and primer and I didn't notice it did much. It did cool in a very gentle way. It's not like it's minty, it doesn't irritate your eyes, but it doesn't really do anything besides cool. And I didn't notice that it helped depuff or de-irritate my eye, or you know, soothe my eye area in the way that I needed it to in like an allergy kind of way or a morning kind of way. It just, it just didn't, didn't really do much for me. And so if you're looking at this thinking that it's gonna, you know, really revolutionize your morning routine and wake your eye area up, I would say go with some coffee. That's That works more for me than this. And last product is this one from Bare Minerals. It's the Translucent Powder Duo, and you have matte on one side and Glow Brilliant on the other. And in addition to this just not working for me, the combo of these two powders in the same palette is just confusing for me. So on one side here, you have a matte translucent setting powder. I'm not sure if these are baked. They are in kind of those characteristically baked kind of domed shapes. So they look baked. It's a very sheer and very finely milled sort of finish on the matte side. The glow side is a little bit more gritty, but just overall, they're very dry powders, very chalky powders. At first I thought the glow could be used in like, like if you wanted a matte finish in your under eye area, you'd use the matte, and if you wanted to glow, you, you could use that in the under eye area, but really this is more of a highlighter and this is more of a setting powder, which is kind of a confusing powder combination to me. Normally it's like bronzer blush, highlight blush, highlight, you know, something like that. Um, so 
In addition to that being confusing, I just found that the formulas of these are very dry and chalky and the translucent, like the matte side, didn't work for me as a setting powder. I had used some of the more dewy concealers or those that I just find I need to set because they sink into fine lines or move throughout the day. I have transfer from my mascara or under eye makeup and the matte just did not work for me. The glow is, I mean, it, yeah, no, the glow doesn't even really leave a natural dewy looking glow. It's so powdery that it comes off as more chalky. And as you spread it out, it looks more like a, not like a disc, kind of like a disco ball type glitter. I don't know, just in general for the price uh, and the reputation that Bare Minerals has, I just found that this did not live up to that for me. So wouldn't recommend this. This is overall a dead product. Wouldn't recommend it to anyone. But that's it for me, guys. Really hope once again this video was useful. I, if you continue to like these, I'll still keep an eye out for stuff that's new as I try it, whether or not I talk about it in videos. Just kind of stash them away in a pile of stuff that dis didn't work for me and I wouldn't recommend. Let me know if this is still something you're interested in. But besides that, once again, guys, hope this video was useful. You enjoyed watching it. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye, guys.